As we get ready to start a new school year, a nonprofit organization is working to make sure wounded veterans and their families are taken care of. Jonathan Coto spoke to some of the veterans who say for them, it's about more than just school supplies. Back to school shopping can be stressful, so it's a huge, huge weight lifted off our shoulders. Are you ready for school? Today, a nonprofit organization handed out 200 backpacks with school supplies to the children of military veterans. And these service members have either been injured in combat, suffered an illness or an injury, um, whether it's been invisible wounds as well. We're here to show them our love and support to stay, especially at the beginning of the school year, where we know that times can be stressful with some out of pocket expenses. A gesture Army veteran. Daniel Carlton says is greatly appreciated. It's incredible. We really appreciate that they don't, they don't forget about us. Uh, you know, not only us as the service members, but our families. Uh, and that's something I think that's often overlooked is that whole family element itself. So that's always appreciated. Retired United States Marine Corps Master Sergeant Blaine Scott says one of the reasons why they host these events is because many of these veterans aren't able to work and rely on limited income. We get to see our service members. We get to see them, we get to interact with them, we get to visit with them for a little while, see how they're doing, and see what if they need anything, help them out on that part as well. And so, uh, a couple of reasons why we love doing this. How are you? Good to see you again. It's been a long time. Yeah. Semper Fi and America's Fund support all branches of the armed forces, providing one-on-one -on -one case management, connection, and lifetime support. I think a big part of them integrating and being a part of our lives is helping, especially for me and other wounded veterans, is figure out their new normal. Like, so as we're trying to navigate that, those scenarios, they have people there to help us. San Antonio's military veterans are arriving here today for more than just a backpack. This is an opportunity to catch up with their fellow brothers and sisters who have also served in the armed forces. Now, as we know, Semper Fi and America Funds serves these families in so many different areas. If you'd like to learn on a way how you can contribute, you can visit our website, KSET com for more information. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Lots of happy faces there this morning. There was another giveaway this morning. Children's Advocates of San Antonio held a back to school giveaway. This event helped families get ready for the new school year. Children were able to grab a backpack and any other school supplies that they might need for the upcoming school year. San Antonio Metro Health also there at that event, giving out to vaccines and health screenings as well. Uh, we know that the pandemic hit hard. We know that inflation is impacting people. So anything that we can do to give back to help this process, we want to do that. We're told about 15 vendors from across San Antonio helped make this event possible. All right, another hot one out there. It's 100 degrees. Take a look. Puffy cumulus clouds. That's all we got. Otherwise, it is hot. Now, here's some good news. Over the weekend, you know, the aquifer not pumping as much. So we actually were able to see the aquifer level go up in the past 24 hours. The aquifer is up half a foot. Uh, that should say up half a foot over the past 24 hours. Molds are low at 200. Pigweed is low as well. There has been some light Saharan dust out there. And coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk more about how that Saharan dust will be with us through the remainder of the weekend and will be near 100 next Next week as we start August, there is a small chance for isolated rain in the mix as well. A lot to unpack in the forecast. Hope you'll stick around. I'll have that coming up. It has been and continues to be a long, hot summer here yeah. across the country and mainly here in South Texas and San Antonio. And we keep racking up those 100 degree days. We keep racking them up. Tim, milestone. It was the 50th 100 degree Ooh. day so far this year. July itself is looking to be our hottest July on record. And records go back to 1885, so quite a time. All right, today we got up to 100. Uh, three degrees above the average. This is technically the hottest time of the year. Our average high temperature peaks at 97, so it's no surprise that we're seeing temperatures in the triple digits, even though they are a little bit higher than average. 50, 100 degree days. That's what today made. And I would be very surprised if we don't go away with the most 100 degree days in a year because we've only got nine more to get to that first place of 59 100 degree days back in 2009. It would be a shocker to me if we don't. We've still got all of August ahead of us and even some of September. Outside right now, though, it's 98. Winds are breezy, gusting up to about 20 miles per hour. You can also notice on the horizon a bit of a haze. We do have some light Saharan dust out there. I'll be talking about the air quality, how that will impact 
impact the air quality in just a few minutes. But for the night tonight, know that it's going to be warm and breezy. We're going to have southwest southeast gusts rather at about 30 miles per hour. Temperatures will fall into the 80s. If you're planning on being out till midnight, it'll be 84 degrees. All right, outside right now it's 100 in Converse, 102 at Simpson, 103 in Pleasanton, still only 95 in Bernie. You'll notice that some cirrus clouds are moving in from the east. There have been a few thunderstorms closer to the Houston area, so we've got some blow off uh, cirrus clouds there throughout the evening. Those will dissipate and it'll be a mostly clear evening. 107 still in Gatula, the hot spot on the map. There's those showers and storms even near Lavaca County starting to fall apart with a loss of daytime heating. It's been healthy rains across North Texas, Oklahoma and the Mississippi River Valley today because of a uh, now warm front which is starting to push up to the north, but that's moving out of the area and instead what we're going to see is just a relatively dry forecast over the next seven days. This is a look at rainfall potential through Tuesday. Most of the rain will be north of Texas and in Louisiana. Then by Thursday we could have a tiny trough of low pressure uh, near the Gulf of Mexico. That would bring us a chance for isolated showers and storms on Friday, but the isolated rain is not going to cut it when it comes to the drought for us. And even then that trough of low pressure moving through on Friday is a big if we still need to let the forecast play out a little bit longer to get into details for Friday. Otherwise, again, not looking great for drought denting rain as we head into the into August, the hottest part of our year. All right, your KSAT 12 hour forecast early tomorrow morning, 76 degrees tomorrow. It's going to be a great pool day. All right, I give you permission to enjoy some time out by the pool tomorrow because we're going to have mostly sunny skies, temperatures in the 90s, and we'll be at 101 for the high temperature in the afternoon with mostly sunny skies. Pretty similar weather to today. Uh, elsewhere, it'll be 104 in Carrizo Springs, 103 in Del Rio, 101 in Canyon Lake, 98 in Kerrville. Closer view of the San Antonio metro area, 104 in Pleasanton and 103 in Seguin. The forecast air quality tomorrow, moderate, just one step below good because we will have some light Saharan dust in the air. This will really not impact a lot of folks, but if you're particularly sensitive to the dust, you may just notice some light allergy like symptoms from that. That'll dissipate by Monday. Really only wimpy rain chances on Monday, 10% chance for a stray shower. August starts off hot, 100 to 102, holding out hope for that isolated rain on Friday. Well, since we didn't win the lottery, maybe we should start an office pool to see who can guess how many 100s we'll cap out at here at the end of 2022. That sounds good. I'll probably win that one. All right, you probably will. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. All right, Larry, uh, Cowboys camp officially kicked off. Yeah, I read online through Cowboys Wire that the line to get into opening ceremonies today in Oxnard was about a half a mile long. I mean, look at that crowd going in. Greg Simmons is live in Oxnard to cover the opening ceremonies. And the Houston Texans broke out a new look at training camp today. Coming up. cheerleaders. Yeah, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders help officially open Cowboys training camp in Oxnard, California today. It's time to go camping with KSAT. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. We have been in training camp in California for the Dallas Cowboys almost a week now, but the first Saturday is always the biggest because it's the opening ceremonies and fans flock to Oxnard for the festivities today. You have the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders and team owner Jerry Jones, along with the mayor and city council of Oxnard. This is where it all begins and what the Cowboys hope is is the road to Super Bowl 57 in Glendale, Arizona. It's wonderful to just be sitting here getting this team, getting started on our journey for our goal toward getting in that Super Bowl. Boy, we appreciate you, Oxnard. We appreciate you fans being here today. With more, let's take you live to Oxnard to hang out with our Greg Simmons. 
Thanks a lot, Larry. What a huge day this has been for the Dallas Cowboys in their training camp here in Oxnard, California. Thousands of fans in the grandstands lining up early this morning to get in, and they were not disappointed after that first practice they were able to watch. Now, this is the last practice that they will see without pads because on Monday the hitting begins. For today, Trayvon Diggs interacting with the fans after the unbelievable second year he had in the NFL. They say the biggest jump a player makes is between year one and year two, and if that's the case, Cowboys quarterback Trayvon Diggs is the poster child. What's the uh, interception goal for this season? Just beat higher, higher than last year. You know, beat my, beat my, you know, uh, 11, and just, you know, just keep going up, just beating that, really. That's Cowboys corner Trayvon Diggs after he tied a franchise record with 11 interceptions in just his second year in the NFL. And what's scary, Diggs was asked if he's a better player compared to this time last year. Most definitely. Uh, I feel like I've grown, you know, uh, grown up a lot. You know, I, I know a lot of football. You know, I've seen a lot of football now. So, you know, it's just kind of natural to me. And just, you know, I do feel a lot better from last year. Diggs saw his stats skyrocket from three interceptions his rookie year to 11 last season, tying Everson Wall's record from 1981. If anyone knows about a second-year leap, it's Diggs, who's hoping the same for his teammate Micah Parsons, who scored 13 sacks as a rookie. He can do incredible things. You know, he's a, a really a great talent, and, you know, just – just seeing him work and just seeing how competitive he is, you know, the sky's the limit for him. He can do really, really great things. So if they can accomplish that in one season, what does that say about the Dallas D going forward? You know, we're trying to just make a statement across the league. Um, just, you know, our unit, you know, got a great group of guys. Like, you know, but, you know, I feel like, you know, we're kind of underrated. Um, but I know how we work. I know how, how we perform. I know how we practice. I know what guys are, I got in my room. So, you know, I know what we can do, you know. So it's just all on us is to put it on tape is to show it so you know we just trying to hold ourselves to a very very high standard so we can just go out there on Sundays and perform if defense wins championships and Dallas has one of the better chances this season live in Oxnard California Greg Simmons KSAT 12 sports thank you Greg day two of practice is now in the books for the Houston Texans and the team had a new look today sporting their battle red helmets the Texans are scheduled to wear their battle red lids November 3rd against the Eagles on Thursday night football but decided to bust them out early head coach Levy Smith said he likes the look of it rookie and third overall draft pick Derek Stingley Jr. is working with DBs at camp and is expected to play in week one against the Colts he's working his way back from last year's foot surgery the rook even returned kicks and punts with a group of players during the special teams portion of practice. Derek Stingley can do a lot of things. Uh, punt returner is one of them. Well, now I'm not saying that he for sure is going to be our punt returner, but the more things you can do. You probably notice Derek getting more reps today. Uh, we'll continue to bring him along at the pace that we had set up before camp started. Uh, he gets a little better each day too. Tomorrow is an off day for the team. Yesterday, we caught up with local trainer Bebe McClinton and local football great Indy Kalu while they were working out some young men. And I'm telling you, that hill is no joke. Kalu's son, DK Kalu, a three-star defensive lineman and bather commit, was with his dad as he gets ready for his senior season at Ridgepoint High School in Missouri City, Texas. DK is definitely following in his dad's footsteps. It's pretty cool seeing being able to work out with the same dude he worked out with when he was in the pros. And uh, I really enjoy it. You know, I came to town because uh, I thought it'd be pretty cool with my son who's going into a senior year of high school and my other son who's going into high school to train with Bebe because I had so many uh, great sessions with, Jay, uh, with Bebe, you know, when I was playing in the NFL. And, and I just thought it'd be a nice way for my oldest son to go into his final season of high school football. And congratulations to New Mexico State offensive lineman Carson Ferris, who was added to the watch list for the Warfield Trophy, college football's premier award for community service. The Reagan High School alum is one of 115 players from the FBS ranks to receive a spot on the awards watch list. Best in the USL Championship with 49 points. San Antonio FC is home tonight at Toyota Field to play the LA Galaxy 2 at 8. San Antonio's six straight wins in USL Championship play are a new club record. Wednesday night, they beat Las Vegas 2-0. Tim? Give me flashbacks there with those boys running up that hill. We had one called Big Bertha. I think I still have scars from Ooh. doing bear crawls. Up Brutal. It. Yeah, thanks, Larry. Thanks for the nightmares. We'll be right back. <laughs> 
Well, you know the drill. Tomorrow, 101 for the high temperature. Some light Saharan dust out there, maybe some allergy-like symptoms for those who are sensitive to it. Otherwise, good pool day tomorrow. It'll be 100 to 102 in the week ahead for the first week of August. The best we can do for rain right now is Friday. 20% chance isolated showers and storms. We'll keep you updated if that changes, but we're in it for the long haul. Well, at least you left us something to look forward to. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> That's all of our time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here for the Night Beat tonight at 10. Have a good night.